the Hedgehog 2 is a movie that's really good. Okay, I'm done. See you guys later. First of all, right off the bat, Jim Carrey, or in this case Robotnik, does come face to face with Knuckles pretty much with at the very start of the movie. It's not a case of, oh, here's 10 minutes of Robotnik, here's 10 minutes of Knuckles, here's 15 minutes of Tails and Sonic, and then they meet. No, 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 no. This movie doesn't waste its time. It jumps straight into it with uh, Knuckles appearing through a portal, kind of like Avengers Endgame. He's going to defeat. Rob he's going to defeat Robotnik, a la Thanos style. And he sees the quill, Sonic's quill, in Robotnik's hand. Robotnik says to him, "I can take you to this blue hedgehog. I know where he is." And then just boom, Sonic the Hedgehog too. That's all within the first five ten minutes. Like I say, it is a very. This movie felt stupid quick. No pun intended. It went by ridiculously fast. Which was really good. I felt like the first one did drag a little bit because of some of the human elements, which praise the Lord above. They did get rid of a lot of the human elements and just give them this really, really, really um kind of pointless subplot of all in the involving Tom and his missus. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Where they go to, I think it's yeah, it's Tom's wife's sister's wedding and the wedding does sort of tie into what they're setting up with this universe but it really is just a case of here's 15 to 20 minutes of sonic tails and knuckles and robotnik here's a few minutes of the wedding and then more of robotnik and sonic and blah 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 but the best thing about the wedding is that while they're there it turns out that everyone who's there is actually secret agents for gun now, Gun, if you know who they are, are very important to the Sonic mythos. I know this personally because I am a connoisseur of Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> and if you know who Gun are, you know exactly who is behind them. This movie does have an end credit scene, by the way, which... You could kind of see coming a mile away, but it is really one of those... <laughs> yes! Moments, because it really does set up what's going to happen in the sequel. Um, I think my biggest takeaway from this movie was the fact that it was just filled with so many really good references and easter eggs. I didn't notice it at the start, but <clears throat> the coffee place where Agent Stone is working, uh, Robotnik's partner from the first film, is actually called Mean Bean. And at first, it's like, oh, it's called Mean Bean. Wait a minute, it's called Mean Bean. Which, if you know it, you'll know that that's Mean Bean Machine from the Sonic the Hedgehog pinball game, I think it was. I didn't really play Mean Bean Machine all that much. Uh, there's also that weird pose Sonic does. I'll leave a picture of it here for reference sake. That he performs halfway during like a dance-off scene in a bar in Siberia. On top of the fact that they have the Chaos Emeralds and the Master Emerald itself coming into play, which... I think it's a little bit soon to bring in the Master Emerald. I think it would have been a much better decision to have the Chaos Emerald showing up one after another and then go into the Master Emerald because I don't know too much about the Master Emerald lore, but I know that you need all seven of the gems or the, the or you need all seven of the Emeralds to get the Master Emerald to work. I could be completely wrong about that. Don't judge me on it. But... Because they introduced the Master Emerald, we get, quite frankly, one of the big surprises of the film, which I wasn't expecting, but my friend who was sat right next to me did, and that was Super Sonic. Sonic does go Super Saiyan in this movie when he kicks the crap out of Eggman at the end. Because Eggman, obviously, after working with Knuckles, betrays him. There's no way it's going to be a case of, oh, Robotnik and Knuckles are working together forever. No, that's not how it works. Robotnik does portray Knuckles and he steals the Master Emerald and becomes this all-powerful god. Essentially starts floating and doing magic and lightning and shit like he thinks he's from Harry Potter crossed with the Flash. And of course it comes to this big climactic battle where he materialises or magnetises all the military vehicles from gun to create a giant Robotnik robot. A robot 
Robotnik. I don't know, whatever the insert pun here. And of course, during the battle, when it when after Knuckles and Tails and Sonic realise we need to work together, Sonic is desperately trying to distract Eggman because <laughs> Knuckles says, the weak point is the groin. Go for the groin. And Sonic's like, don't keep saying groin. And then he realises, wait a minute, I'm the groin. I'm the weakness. Robotnik wants me. He doesn't want you to. And it leads to this really cool uh, sequence where Sonic is running out of super speed, which... Did that ever happen in the games? I can't remember. It, I know that if you ever hit like one of those springy board thingamabobbers, Sonic would just go, a yeet, and fly off back about 10 feet. Oh, my poet, I didn't know it. But, yeah. Sonic gets hold of the Master Emerald at the end, and he goes Super Saiyan. And just basically rips Robotnik's giant robot apart. And it, it is, like I say, I think bringing in the Master Emerald and Super Sonic in the second movie is way too soon. Because, again, this movie does set up another one. Which I'm going to get into in a second. It's kind of like having... It's kind of like doing a. Th it's kind of like doing Transformers, but the first movie you have Megatron, and then the second movie you bring in Galvatron straight away. There's no like build up to him. It's like going Megatron, ten minutes of shit, Unicron, Galvatron. I'm not complaining. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. I'm not sitting here and going, oh, they shouldn't have brought it in. This is now a zero out of ten for me. It's not that. I just think that if they were going to do this, they should have done it a little bit later on. But then, of course, the um, I am skipping over a lot of the details. It is pretty much a case of, here's the Master Emerald. Here's Knuckles. He and Sonic's tribe have been at war for centuries. Or he and Longclaw's tribe have been at war for centuries. Blah, 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 blah. What are we going to do? Let's take the Emerald before Knuckles gets it. Okay. And then, of course, before they have the whole bit where Knuckles realises Robotnik is actually a bad guy. He works with Sonic and they rescue each other's life. And they become best friends, blah, blah, blah. And then they bang somewhere, I don't know. And then, of course, happily ever after, they go play baseball. Sonic eats a chili dog because <laughs> I know what that is. But then we get to the credit sequence, which this, again, if you knew what this was going to be, or you had even the slightest idea of what it might have been, you were probably correct. Gun, the gun agents at the end turn around to the main general of the gun unit, and he says, Sir, she says, Sir, we've captured Robotnik's lab, and we found some files, something that has been buried deep underground for hundreds upon thousands of years. The gun general turns around and says, Oh my God. And then you cut to this lab. I'm guessing it is Robotnik's lab because they did mention they captured it. And you just see this capsule rising from the dirt. And then you see the red sneakers, the black body and the yellow quills and the red quills. And it's like, oh my god, it's Shadow. They went straight ahead and they gave people what they wanted, which is exactly what this movie should have done. It isn't like a DC movie where... They tease things, and then they just go, yoik, you're not having that, yoik, you're not having that, and then out of nowhere, they shove them into a random movie, and then wonder why fans are pissed off. No, they go right ahead, and they tease that Shadow will be the main villain of this one, because I forgot to mention Robotnik dies. Sure, whatever. Robotnik gets a bullet in his head or something, I don't know. And then it just basically builds up that Shadow's going to be the main villain. At least I hope he's going to be the main villain. I don't want... My biggest fear with them bringing in Shadow is that they're going to spoil his character arc. Because from what I know of Shadow, he is amnesiac. He doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know who Gun are. He doesn't know pretty much anything except that for he vaguely recognises Sonic as the Blue Hedgehog. And that he must stop him. So do Shadow and Sonic know each other? Because Shadow has been 
in Robotnik's lab for years, apparently. Does that mean we're going to have to build up the Amnesiac story? Or is he just going to basically be a case of, I remember you, I've never met you, but I remember you. But we'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Again, I did skip over a lot of the boring details. It really is... This A lot of critics were complaining that this was pretty much... There's too much Sonic and not enough humans. Um, yeah, that's what I wanted to see and that's what I got. I didn't want it to be a case of the first movie where... I like James Marsden. He's a fine enough actor and he plays the role perfectly fine, but... Excuse me. It, it's like people don't go to a Sonic the Hedgehog movie to watch the humans, unless it's Robotnik it, and Jim Carrey is having the time of his goddamn life with this. Which, on, on a side note, Jim Carrey has come out recently and said that after Sonic the Hedgehog two, he is considering retiring. Which, if he does, I wish him all the best of luck. But if he doesn't, and I hope we get one more movie out of it, thank you. I really do hope that Jim Carrey does come back for one more movie because we can't just have Robotnik die. I, I, he, we didn't see him die at the end of the movie when the robot falls over. He just gets tumbled backwards. And uh, what's the saying? If they died, in a, if we didn't see you die in a cutscene, we can always bring you back or something. But I do have a feeling that they have basically killed him off. But hopefully, fingers crossed, Jim Carrey does turn around and say, Oh no, I'm coming back for the next one. And then I will retire. So hopefully, that is what happens in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. We do see Robotnik make his return and team up with Shadow. I don't think they'll do a repeat of what happened in this one. I don't think it will be a case of Robotnik and Knuckles team up. And then Robotnik and Shadow team up. It will just be a case of... Like they'll work together briefly, but it'll very quickly fall apart. And Shadow will just go straight back into, I want to destroy this blue hedgehog. I don't know why. I just want to destroy him. And then I'm going to find out who I am, why I'm here, or who the hell you are. Please give him a gun. <laughs> Please, Jeff Fowler, give him a gun. <laughs> I want to see Shadow blasting caps in people's ass in the next one. That'd be great. Or him yelling, damn! Or oh, hell. Please let this Mercs movie have Shadow being edgy again. But yeah, anyway guys, that's my quick spoiler-filled review for Sonic the Hedgehog. I do hope you enjoyed it. What did you think of the movie? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Or did you think it was just as good as the first one? Or did you think it wasn't as good as the first one? Uh, please let me know down there in the comments. Or maybe they're here, or maybe they're there, or maybe they're up there now. I have no idea where YouTube is moving them to nowadays. But yeah, this is Engine and Tonic, signing off.